good. What's up, you guys? So the next little upgrade I've got going on for the Bandit is this Traxxas uh, Constant Velocity Drive Shafts, part 6842R. See, it comes with two of them, so put those on. Um, I'm going to replace the shock tower mount with a new one <clears throat> just because of continuously putting this on and off, on and off. Um, has worn it down in a couple places, and especially where this screw goes in through the back. Um, I didn't drill it very straight, so plus it's longer than it needs to be. So I'm going to cut this off a little bit straighter and leave a little bit more plastic rather than cutting it off all the way at the bottom. I'll probably cut it right where that hole is. Drill a drill down just a little bit, and that way I've got a stronger hold there. And then the big upgrade is a Custom Works adjustable arm kit. So this allows for the wheel to be adjusted um, pointing more outwards or inwards. Um, the last video you guys may have seen, I still had the arms reversed. And so these wheels were pointing backwards and the shocks were on this side. Well, and the top of the shock was actually mounted up here. I'll figure out a way to get the shock to mount on the front, and it works out fine. Um, it actually kind of matches how the fronts look, so that's kind of neat. But um, So I was able to do that so that the wheels would point inwards like normal, um, but these will still allow me to straighten these out a little bit more for our high-speed runs. And then the fronts have been straightened out. Those have, have always had the proper adjustment. Um, something that's gonna be coming in the mail soon. Um, you guys see if I push this down, the wheels actually point inwards. And that's because of the angle of the bulkhead. When this goes, when this A-arm goes up and down, it actually goes up and down at an angle, which creates that turn. I've ordered a front bulkhead that actually mounts the, uh, the arms flat like this instead of at an angle. So the shocks will be up and down as well. Everything will move up and down and the wheel will stay straight. That will help with stability for high speed runs as well. So let me go ahead and get this put together. The drive shafts and the shock tire mount will be um, easy enough. I will go into some detail on these A arms because I think some people are going to be interested in seeing that. All right, so new shock tower's on. Like I mentioned, I only cut it right where that pin would have normally been. And then I have two small washers on the bottom in order to level out that brace there. And then one washer up top. And then I had to cut that bolt down so it wouldn't go all the way through this hole. So looking good there and still just as strong as before. Can lift the whole truck up, so. All right, so it's probably gonna be a little bit easier to put these um, constant velocity drive shafts on first. So I took the innermost pin out and the outer pin from this A-arm. Now I can lift this up and move the A-arm out the way because we're upgrading that. And then I'm gonna take this 17 millimeter adapter off and then towards the differential there's a little grub screw right where the tip of my finger is. There we go. That would take, uh, unscrew that to take this drive shaft off. All right, so quick note, um, these ends where they screw into the differential, they're metal. So I'm sure you put a little bit of blue Loctite on there. Um, also be mindful that I thought this was all one piece, but this actually can pull out. So just be careful there. All right, one last thing on the, these drive shafts. As you're screwing that in, just screw it in until it's snug. Don't over tighten it because uh, you will have the strength to strip that out. Definitely don't want to do that. That's why you're using Loctite. Get it snug and then let it set. All right, both new drive shafts are on. Both run very smoothly. Um, so now we're going to 
take a look at these custom works adjustable arms. So let's work on the right side first and let me go ahead and grab these instructions here. What I'm gonna do just so I don't bore you guys with this is I'm gonna get everything assembled and then after I have a better understanding of how it all works, I'll break it down for you on the video. All right, and I did go ahead and open everything up and separate it out so you guys can see. You've got eight of those little white washers, four silver ones, two short spacers, two longer spacers, two short pins, two long pins, two, uh, what do they call that, slide nuts, and two spacer clips. Eight of those small screws, two longer screws, and then you've got two that have flathead, um, two medium-sized uh, screws, six of those blue locking nuts, and two adjustment screws. All right, so I've been working through this, putting it together, taking it back apart so that I can understand it and then show you guys. So what we're gonna do first is put this adjustment nut, slide nut. Um, there's a part on it that is a little bit thinner. I don't know how to describe it. Um, where it can be inserted into the top of this. So it goes on with the threads pointing towards the outsides. Drop that in there like that. And then we're gonna flip this over and it might be easier actually to just do it this way. make sure that it lines up with that. Okay, now we're gonna pinch and flip this whole thing over so that doesn't come undone. And now we're going to use this screw. It's gonna go in through here and you'll have a nut on the other side and then this button screw, it was one of the two um, medium sized ones with one of the washers and a screw on the other side that's gonna go through here. Don't over tighten anything yet. After that, we're gonna thread this through and then through that sliding nut and then have another nut, another blue one on the other side. So let me go ahead and do that. And it says just to screw through the slide nut until the screw bottoms out at the face of the arm. So as soon as this bottoms out, right there, done. All right, and then it says to screw one of these nuts onto here so that it just barely touches the arm. Okay, we're not going to tighten it to the arm. Need this. Let's see what size is that? Here we go. So tightening it down just until it touches the arm. I'm gonna have to grab the screw from this side. All right. So I'm gonna back it off just a tiny, tiny bit. There, so it's it's barely touching the arm, and then this side is just on the face. All right, so the instructions are saying that in order to make adjustments, you're gonna back this screw off a half a turn. Um, it's okay to run with this screw loose like it is, and with it backed off, should be able to turn this. All right, so because this is just barely touching the arm. Actually, it looks like I can go just a tiny, tiny bit tighter, which let me go ahead and do that. 
Okay, so with this just barely touching, when we turn this, we're actually moving the arm along that slider. So see how, it's kind of hard to see, but this line here lines up with the line all the way over on this side. It starts at zero and then it goes two degrees for every notch, so two, four, six this way and two, four, six this way. So I'm actually gonna move this to the centermost position. Hopefully you guys can see that moving. So now it's at perfectly center. This line is attached to this line. And so this arm where the old ones had a curve to it, the, it this where this pin goes in was not perfectly parallel to this pin. Um, now this arm, they're going to be perfectly parallel. So the tires are going to be perfectly straight if that's how you want to run it. So then after you get it where you need it to be, you just tighten this down enough just to grab that. Once you feel resistance, should be good. And then this shouldn't easily turn. Looks like you could still turn it with some force, but really what you should do is remove that, make your adjustment, and then tighten that back down. And you can do all of that with this on the car. All right, so something else uh, real quick that I just learned, um, these spacer clips, these are actually going to be what you use to, um, once you get the arm onto the truck, if you wanna insert the spacer on this side or this side, that's gonna allow you to slightly adjust the arm forward or backwards, depending on how you wanna do that. And then for the front, you can use up to three of these little white spacers um, to move the front slightly forward or slightly back. Um, so you use those two in conjunction. I think what I'll do, um, since you can run up to three, um, I'll just do whatever, however many is needed to, um, get this, uh, pretty snug. Cause I believe, let me move the camera real quick. And I'll See, I'll just turn this so you guys can see. Get this out of the way. There should be some space. Yeah, so, you know, when you first put this on, you're gonna think, oh man, this isn't the right size, but you can use up to three spacers to, uh, you know, put this on either side, or not use up to three. You're gonna use the three spacers to have it all the way forward on this side, all the way forward on this side, or all the way back, or, you know, slightly back or slightly forward, depending on if you put one on this side and two on the other, uh, vice versa. So that's what those are for. So I'm not seeing any other instructions regarding um, these additional spacers. So you've got these little white ones, these black ones that are um, a little bit thicker than the white ones, and then the black ones that are really thick. And I think that these are all gonna be used as adjustments for exactly where the arm's gonna be um, on the car. So, yeah, cause there's nothing else that says anything about it. This just says, you know, one, two, five, five times three spacers, which I assume were these little white ones, but um, it looks like you can use a combination of these, these spacers here um, to move this forward and back as you see fit. All right, so what I found to be the perfect fit for my situation was to put the arm on with just one little white spacer, push that all the way on, and then just barely squeeze on this clip. And that's made it where it will move up and down pretty smoothly, but it will stay in whatever space that you put it. So it's got just the right amount of movement. Um, it results in no forward and backwards movement. So that's great for uh, high speed stability. Um, but the, once the shock is installed, the shock will help push it up and down. 
Um, so that should be good right there. You can see with the clips on the back side that the arm is pushed furthest back. And then same thing up here. We have the option to put spacers on the left side of the carrier or the right. I'm gonna put mine on the right side so that it pushes the wheel just slightly back. Um, that's not gonna impact the drive shaft at all. All right, so last few things, like I mentioned, spacers up front moves this back just a tiny bit. And then the shock tower mount usually has the shock mounted on this side, which the arms do have mounts on both sides. So that's a good thing. You can put it on either side, um, but that would have gotten in the way of this. Um, I would have had to move this from this side to that side. And, but I, I really wanted the shock in front of the rear tire anyways. Um, and so I put just a little spacer here, washer, and then a longer screw through this whole piece up here, and then a, a locking washer and a nut on the other side so that it doesn't back out. And now everything works perfectly, and there's enough clearance down here all throughout the range. So everything's looking really good. Um, screw up front there. So hopefully you guys can see, and hopefully this helps you um, with putting yours together if you're gonna do this uh, to your bandit or slash or whatever. Um, now I'll have the ability to adjust the toe in for this rear tire. Right now it should be set to completely straight, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, same thing, um, and then we'll see what it looks like with the tires on, see if everything looks completely straight or not. All right, we are finished up. Tires are back on and we are looking really, really good. So yeah, you guys can see there, damn near perfect as far as those tires being straight. So I'm gonna test it out like this, um, see how it runs. And then when we go for a high speed run, We'll put those foams back on, but yeah, I am really excited to see how all this runs. Let's go ahead and get the batteries charged up. All right, so um, it looks like it's gonna rain here shortly, but I wanted to at least get uh, a running video as part of this upload um, for you guys. So let me go ahead and turn this on. Uh, get this hooked up. Also, I don't have my GoPro. My cousin is borrowing it. So I'm going to have to try to, I don't know, maybe I'll set the camera up or something so you guys can see it. Uh, maybe I'll set it on the tripod or something, but let me get this hooked up. I need two hands for it. Man, I am, I am just absolutely loving this mounting system. It's so awesome. And the fact that I can, because it's screwed in here and here, the fact I can pick the car up like that. It's just great. So let me grab the remote, put that in this hand. Grab the car. One handed here. Oh yeah, nice and straight. Oh my gosh, look hardly any drifting and if there is any it's because of the steering trim oh my gosh super smooth too this is great all right let's get it lined up for a launch here mm. <laughs> So much power. All right, I gotta work on my throttle control a little bit. Oh wait, I got a car coming. I don't have the quite the reach to get it all the way, but. Damn, another car coming. All right, I wanna get a, a smoother, uh, launch here
Yeah, that was, that was terrible. <laughs> oh, that car's coming back. Hang on. All right, let me, um, let me set the tripod up so you guys can see this a little bit better. Hang on one second. All right, so I got the tripod up and I've got it in wide angle camera view so you guys will be able to see a little bit better. Mm. This thing is definitely fast. I really just wanted to see what a full throttle hit would uh <laughs> would look like, but now we know. Wow, it's so fast. All right, let me put it in regular view and we'll point it down the street a little bit. All right, there we go. Oh yeah, the driving is just really good now. Now these tires, these back ones, um, they just go over every bump and they just kind of bounce around. But this setup is definitely much more stable than uh, what I had before. I'm really liking these A-arms. Tracking really nice and straight. All right, there's some dogs coming, so I'm gonna bring the car in. I uh, don't want them chasing after, so we're gonna call it here. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully this video was helpful or informative to you guys. Um, I think next we're gonna put those foam tires on and go for a high speed run, but anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.